I'm sure, but well. Right. So previously, we've shot some cold steel bucklers, and under the influence of my medium high-ish power crossbows, shattered it pretty well. I've also shot steel bucklers, and those did a little bit better. Stopped broadheads, not quite in their tracks, but you know enough to prevent you from suffering terrible injury. Ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, that's a mouthful. This has done the best so far, however, it is a bad case of half inch thick. This might be okay for a shield, but let's just say you wanted to make some armor out of it. We're gonna try some carbon fiber. Now, one thing I always say about carbon fiber is that it's really, really light. This actually feels just intuitively a little bit heavy, but that might just be me. And it gets expensive rather quickly, so I bought a smaller piece but we'll weigh this up and use the map, see if we can't figure out what a larger shield is going to weigh made out of this. Just for reference, this is five millimeter thick. And this one, I have same piece, similar piece, this time covered in leather, to see if that would make for a nice soft padding to prevent things like arrows glancing off. Depending upon how this goes, we'll make this with some smaller crossbows, the big ones, and maybe something else, depending upon how everything goes. Alright, so our piece happens to weigh too much for the scale. So now in so now in grams we have two hundred and three grams. Alright. The carbon fiber plate set up over there, more like as if this was the armor. And I think what we'll do is we'll test this one as if it was the shield. Some of your ancient armors had anti-spalling on top of them. They had soft coverings over some of the plate armor. We can infer that you could do, you could put soft covering over this after the fact. We're just gonna find out what it's like by itself. I did bodkin point and a couple of field points because I think that's what we're gonna actually see. Floating around, whatever hellscape you find yourself in. Interesting. We're gonna shoot the last one just for the fun of it. Now because of the goofy way I set up the fletchings on this one, I have to shoot it out of the cheap shot. Have a look. Here are our projectiles. Our field points are blunted and the knocks blew off. These knocks broke off and these ones are glued in. So these are going to be a royal pain to have to clean out and fix. Don't glue in your knocks if you can avoid it. We have our bodkin point. So this would have served a lot better were it made out of hardened steel, which just was a just a mild steel. The metal injection molded part is actually holding up well. This is actually still nice and pokey. I thought for sure this is the one that was going to break bend or deform, but it didn't. Ah. Here's our impacts. This one merely bulged a little bit, so you would actually be fine so far. So the cheap shot and a crossbow adder didn't do all that well. And I think that those represent a pretty good approximation of what most of the pistol type crossbows you're going to get are able to achieve. Your lower end pistol crossbows, these those are roughly equivalent to like your goat's foot lever type crossbows, if you want a point of reference. Not exactly, because I'm shooting significantly lighter bolts out of it right now. But we're going to step it up. This crossbow, in modern crossbow terms, only really represents the, the lower end of hunting crossbows. I'll get about 75 to 85 foot-pounds of energy out of it, depending upon my projectile mass. But a lot of your nicer crossbows will shoot energy is almost double that. So this, in modern terms, this doesn't represent an awful lot of power. It does, however, correspond to 
There we go. So, as far as, say, 80 foot-pounds of energy on average, that's actually closer to what uh, Scholagrim's crossbow was, and some... Mm, if you look at medieval crossbows, they have one with a significantly higher energy than even modern crossbows. I don't have the ability to emulate that. I'd need to get like a Bulldog 440 or something like that, but that's another quest for another day. Thing moderately representing so relatively low power for today. All right, we're gonna hit it with a VPA archery, solid broadhead. These have been quite nice. A basic uh, tool steel, or a, I'm sorry, basic carbon steel put to good use. Kitty, no, no, this is this is the danger zone. No. No, 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 no. Yeah, away from the danger zone. So, I think the carbon fiber safety margin is about to be compromised. Oh. And up next, we have a three blade S7 steel tough head broadhead. Been wanting to test this out for a while, so we're going to test out the carbon fiber and a three blade broadhead in one shot. And we'll do a crown bolt here, one of these. This is going to bounce off, I'm sure, but... Oh! There we go. Away from the danger zone. Be safe, and... A shoddy gluing on the insert, and it flew out. There's our brass insert. That's all we got sticking through there. Okay, that's enough to give you a bad day. Hello, kitty. All right, all right. Have to ruin your day, but a little bit more survivable than average. Points on both of these. This one's still very, very good. You can see the edge. You can see from here the edge is taken off a bit. It's actually not that bad, though. I'm actually kind of impressed with this. Honestly, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of point and testing out the leather-covered uh, shield, but we're here, we're gonna do it anyway. And just do the two-blade. I'm just gonna go ahead and... Hello again, oh. About the same. So far, carbon fiber is actually doing really, really well. But before we get to our conclusion, I want to hit this with one more projectile. So down there, I have both layers. So 10 millimeters of carbon fiber. And we're gonna see. Here's where it hit the leather. There's where it bulge and blew out the back here and there's where it smashed into here I think oh my yeah this was this is nine mil proof I mean that's probably just a little splinter in the back here that right there is just a little bit of a splintering that poked through if I had to put any extra protection on there at all, this would have been fine. They did rather well. Uh, the splinters are quite obnoxious, so I would want some other layer in between me and the carbon fiber. I got another splinter in my finger I gotta remove now. If you were to scale it up to something like this, I did the, I actually made a 3D model of it. It'd get pretty heavy. You'd end up wanting kind of a, a side strap, a uh, targe instead of a center grip like this is. This guy right here is about 140 thigh thick and weighs four and a half kilos or uh, 10 pounds. And I think, and from what I'm able to gather, this is roughly in the range of historic ones. This one's actually 
hand hammered. There's a little flea market find actually. Now, in the modern world, I don't intend for any of this to be taken too seriously. This is just me having fun in my backyard. None of this is certifiable anything, so this is just a bit of fun. But there's an entire discussion just in the world of shields itself. I'll leave a link to one such discussion, but different shields throughout history were constantly changing and addressing issues. This had a specific time and place, something like this was relatively rare, but they certainly existed. So, let's just say you were an intrepid time traveler and you have access to bring carbon fiber back with you. Uh, yeah, you could make some nice stuff. Uh, I'm half tempted to take one of these foam jobbies, use that as an outline, cut it out, glue a layer to it, and, and extra soft, sticky, and the right shape, and the artwork's already done for me. The main issues you're gonna come up with is carbon fiber is not historically accurate, and it's expensive, and it can be a bit hard to work with. I have seen very, very little actual carbon fiber work. I've seen like maybe one person doing a, a pauldron. One pauldron. I don't know if any particular shape of shield would work. Something like this would actually be pretty sweet. This has been the carbon fiber shield video. Thanks for watching.